The River Ebro was where the Spanish Republic's fate was to be sealed. July 28, 1938. In the Ebro Valley, the Republic, now close to desperation, launched its greatest offensive. Much of the Republican army was thrown into the battle, a fight not just for ground, but supremely for time. Juan Negrin, the Prime Minister, knew that European war against Hitler was now close. If only the Republic could hang on, it might be rescued by the anti-fascist allies in that war. The Ebro was the most costly battle of the Civil War, but for the Republicans it came at the end of two years of bitter, unsuccessful fighting. Two years which would transform Republican hopes into memories of failure. Now failure was behind them. The soldiers of the Republic who crossed the river that day were excited to be on the offensive again. This was great that we were crossing the Ebro and going to the other side to have a go at them and push them back. And obviously we were open to chase them quite a distance, chase them all together on that front anyway. This optimism defied the experience of two years of defeat. Once again, the popular army was attempting to match the enemy in conventional warfare, which would lead to a battle of attrition in which the Republic stood no chance. The attack across the Ebro was probably doomed before it began. The nationalists now held over two-thirds of Spain. They had split the Republican zone into two. Valencia was under threat. The all-out offensive across the Ebro was meant to ward off this danger. The idea came largely from Juan Negrin, the enigmatic Prime Minister of the Republic, a right-wing socialist and a distinguished professor of medicine. Negrin mirrored many of the contradictions of the Republic. He believed that the only way to fight the war was to halt the revolution and bring the army under disciplined, central control, with himself in command. In this, Negrin was closely supported by the communists. They were tough. They took orders ultimately from Moscow. Their vision of democracy was a world away from Negrin's. Yet he was committed to working with the communists, not least because the Republic needed Soviet aid. Negrin was a subtle, unreadable person. No one knew his real mind. At the same moment that he was secretly initiating peace feelers to Franco, he was also organizing the supreme offensive of the war. At first, the nationalists were taken by surprise. The Republican thrust drove them back in hasty retreat. The hills overlooking the small town of Gandesa, 25 miles inside nationalist territory, now became the new front line. General Franco rushed forward reinforcements pulled out of other battlefronts. In huge, prolonged battles like this, Franco's army had the advantage. It was more mobile and in the nationalist army orders were more efficiently communicated. 
it benefited from German and Italian aid, while the Republic's foreign aid had diminished with the renewed closure of the French border. Determined not to yield another yard of ground, Franco took personal command. The Ebro attack was halted and turned into four months of slogging, static battle, the largest and most savage conflict of the whole war. Hill 666 was one of the Republic's most advanced positions. It became a focus of nationalist counterattacks. Bill Bailey and other international brigaders were helping Spanish Republican troops to defend the hill. And that was one case where we prayed, literally prayed for the darkness to come so we could at least get up and stretch our legs, move around. And the bastards, when nighttime came, they threw more shells at us. And then it was a question of watching blazing rockets uh, bursting in air after it would hit the mountainside, throw tons of rock at you. And it wasn't so much the artillery hitting you, it was down the splinters of rock, splashing all over the place. And I have to say that it was one of my most bitter experiences. And I'll speak truthfully and say that there were many times when I figured I would never get off this rock. In the end, the Republican troops were forced off Hill 666, leaving its slopes littered with their dead. Now began the retreat, a retreat which was only to end with the end of the war. Enrique Lista was a Republican corps commander at the Battle of the Ebro. We found ourselves in a situation where we couldn't give up any of our positions. So it was a battle of attrition, in which we were losing our best troops, but we had no choice. By now, there was no choice. Once again, the popular army had attempted to match the enemy in regular combat and failed. Just as it had at Brunetti, Belchite, Teruel. The popular army found it could not defeat the enemy in conventional fighting for defended positions. The Republic had put down the revolution behind its own lines. This meant that the government also avoided revolutionary military tactics. Guerrilla war, invented in Spain as the people's answer to regular armies, was never seriously attempted in the civil war. As it had done before, the popular army fought with courage. But once again, in a battle of attrition, it could not prevail against the superior weight and professionalism of the nationalists. Once again, the Republican forces were hammered into retreat. Behind them, they left vast quantities of precious equipment. 